All right, here we are again. We are ready to review now. 10.3, the types of commercial agriculture. So here's our review video. Let's go over each type. If you remember, these are the types of agriculture as well as the types of subsistence that we learned about in our crop rotation throughout the room. Let's start with plantation farming. So plantation farming, this is a style of commercial farming. It is the only commercial farming that you should see in LDCs and DCs. But there are plantation style farms in MDCs as well. They grow cash crops. Um, and this is one to two crops. This is how cotton is grown. Even the United States in the Southeast and in Texas where so much cotton is grown, Louisiana too. Um, you see cotton grown on plantation style. Same with sugarcane. Sugarcane in Florida is plantation style, but certainly the sugarcane that's grown in the Caribbean. This is plantation farming. Coffee is plantation farming. Um, coffee is grown in the tropic tropic areas, um, so tropical climates all along the equator. So you see this in along the Amazon in South America. You see it through um, Southern Africa, and you'll see it through Southeast Asia as well. Coffee is one of the most valuable traded commodities in the world. Tea is also plantation style. So much of this is in South and um, East Asia. Rubber is uh, plantation farming as well. Um, rubber can be from either rubber trees or it can be from synthetic rubber. Tobacco is also plantation style. Even tobacco grown in the United States and southern parts in states like Tennessee, North Carolina, but you see it in Kentucky as well. This is plantation style. And any commercial farm in LDCs or DCs that's owned by a multinational um, for export for consumption in a DC or MDC, even drug crops in LDCs and DCs, so much of that, that's also plantation style. If you take a look at the pictures, this is rubber on the left. These are what rubber trees look like. Um, this would be a natural um, rubber and then this is banana so for example those Chiquita bananas that so many of us eat and love um, those are grown on big plantation farms in Central America places like Guatemala and they're owned by multinational corporations like Chiquita and they pay their workers very little and then they're exported for consumption in DCs or MDCs those bananas on those Chiquita banana um, plantations they're not consumed by the people there next let's talk about mixed crop and livestock so these are crops grown to be fed to the animals three-quarters of the income do come from the animal products so they have to have a balance of labor throughout the year because this is relatively labor intensive so they have a pretty consistent labor uh, throughout the year this is mainly located in from the Iowa to the Dakotas with the center of this being in Iowa. So the cold and warm mid-latitude climate zones. This is what we refer to as barn farming. So you, this is often um, the animals are in barns or in feed lots and fattening lots. This is, uh, these would be cows, pigs, chickens, and turkeys. Anytime you're really talking about poultry, you're talking about mixed crop and livestock because most of the time this is in barns. In the United States, corn is the most important crop in mixed crop and livestock. Um, people do consume some of this in the form of oil and margarine, but most of the corn that's grown is for animal feed, so they feed that to the animals. Corn-fed meat, this is mainly in um, a United States phenomenon. You don't see this necessarily in all parts of the world. A lot more of them are grass-fed. But the U.S. it's corn fed. One, because we have so much corn produced, so we must have a, a an outlet for all of that corn that's produced. But also, corn um, tends to sweeten up the meat. Um, the second most popular or most important crop in mixed crop and livestock would be soybean. And soybeans used mostly for animal feed, but they do use some of this for oil and such. They tend to practice crop rotation in mixed crop and livestock. The crop rotation, again, would be corn, wheat, soybean, and then they would leave it fallow for maybe a year or one season, fallow meaning unplanted. That way it can replenish the soil um, and the nutrients in the soil. So they would do a crop rotation. So maybe one season that field would have corn. Maybe the next season 
Um, it would have wheat, then maybe the next season it would have soybean, and then the next season it would be left fallow for soil re replenishment. If it's not left fallow, sometimes they'll plant alfalfa or rape seed there. Um, those are th th those are um, plants that are they while well, they do have some use for them, they're to um, replenish the soil. Here we have some pictures of mixed crop livestock. So you see this would be um, these are turkeys in the barn. So this is um, barn farming, and then this would be a feed lot for cattle. So again, this is mainly there's some sort of shelter dwelling, and that that's where the animals stay. And that the corn or soybean that's grown on, or even sometimes the wheat that's grown there on that farm, typically they feed them to the animals, as you see here in the pictures. Next, let's talk about dairy farming. This is the most important type of commercial agriculture around large urban areas in the northeastern part of the United States, southeastern Canada, and northwest Europe. In the United States, you see uh, large dairy farming in New York, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and that serves that whole northeastern corridor. Then you see this around Wisconsin, which serves this entire Midwestern corridor, centering on Chicago. And then out in California, you see a lot of dairy farming for that West Coast. You tend to see this mostly in cold mid-latitude climate zones. In the world today, though, India is now the world's largest dairy producers. And so you have this phenomenon called the milk shed. Milk shed is the distance um, and by which the before the milk will spoil. And so this milk shed has expanded. Um, so that distance, that market area has expanded because of innovations like refrigeration. But milk dairy products are still perishable. So they still need to be located closer to consumers, but that market is much, much larger. So for example, this Wisconsin market that would service all of Chicago and the Midwestern areas. Um, and so these are products like milk, cheese, butter, and other milk products. They do not eat the animals. So that's an important thing is the, the, the cows, they don't eat the cows or the goats or the sheep. The farmers, dairy farmers do face a lot of difficulties because of declining revenues and increasing costs. So to offset that, you see consolidating into larger farms. And so once they consolidate into larger farms, they can have a lot more animals and they can produce more so they can sell more. So dairy farming is also uh, difficult um, in order to make a lot of profits. Here we have some pictures of dairy farms. So um, here we have dairy farms. D dairy farms, um, the cows do sometimes go outside. They're outside some of the time. This is probably, dairy farming is highly mechanized now. They're probably doing some sort of inoculation or they're moving the cows in so that they can get ready to milk them. Again, this isn't by hand anymore. This is all done by machine. Highly, highly mechanized. Next, let's talk about grain farming. Grains are seeds from different grasses. Um, this is in uh, from Iowa. Missouri to Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma. This is what's referred to in the United States as our bread basket because uh, this is where so much of our wheat is produced for human consumption, turning it into bread. This is in mainly cold mid-latitude climate zones. The difference here for the, the grain that's produced in grain farming as opposed to what they produce in mixed crop livestock is that this grain in grain farming is primarily for human consumption rather than for animals. Wheat is the number one product because wheat, it, it commands higher price. It has many uses. It's very easily stored and transported. Wheat is the world's leading export crop. This is major, world's leading export crop. Farming again in the United States is a multi-billion dollar a year industry. Same with the wheat trading um, component of that. The United States and Canada do make up half the world's wheat output. They use heavy machines like combat combines and tractors. Grain farming is also highly mechanized, highly advanced. Um, the work it's not it doesn't it's not necessarily consistent throughout the year, so it's they don't need to maintain as consistent of a, a labor short uh, labor supply. Here are some pictures of our grain farming. So this is. 
um, wheat you can see here in the fields it's been cut already and harvested um, this is the hay so the stalks um, they've they've um, bailed those up and now they can use this for animal feed they can sell that for animal feed or for anybody who would like to buy this um, to use as fertilizer this is our combine you can see it's cutting um, and what this does it sucks that wheat inside and then it thrashes it separates the weak wheat um, from the stalk and then the stalks oftentimes will shoot out the back here very advanced machine this machine can be up to a million dollars so again farmers Farmers need a lot of money to practice um, practice their, their different craft. Next is livestock ranching. This is practiced in MDCs. It's typically an arid and semi-arid climate, so more dry. It usually can't support crops on its own. This is extensive land use. They require a lot of land. Um, in the United States, this has had a long history, so the range wars. These were in the late 1800s. This is ingrained into our own folk culture with the cowboys. Um, and it had been, uh, these people had been ranching on government-owned land for years. And the government began selling um, the land to farmers who put up barbed wire to keep out the ranchers. The ranchers rebelled, but eventually they, they lost and they had to buy land for their own ranches. Many, many ranchers are finding it hard to make a profit now, so they're switching to growing crops because it's more profitable, but it does require irrigation because it's in drier areas. Ranching, like mixed crop and livestock, is part of a much larger meat processing industry. This, th this is not like some sort of romantic vision of being out on open ranges and the rancher is existing in isolation they're, they're just another component in the meat processing industry meat processing industry next let's talk about mediterranean farming this is located around the mediterranean sea so southern europe northern africa western asia you see this in california central chile southwestern part of south africa and in southwest australia they border a sea you tend to see this on the west coast of continents where you have these sea winds that bring in moisture and they therefore have moderate winter temperatures and summers that are hot and dry. So this is a Mediterranean climate. And this would be crops for human consumption. So horticulture, fruits, vegetables, flowers, nuts, olives, grapes, and some cereal grains like to make muesli. So cereals um, in the morning. Let's take a look at what this looks like. On the left here, these are almond um, this is an almond farm. So these are almond trees. You can see they're in bloom and these will turn into almonds and then they have machines. So they either harvest this by hand or they'll have machines that come in and they shake the, sh the stalk, of the, excuse me, they shake the trunk of the tree. That's how they do pecans too. And they put a, a big um, cloth down here. They shake it and the nuts fall off and then they collect the nuts. Over here, this is a vineyard. Um, so these are these are grape vines. Um, you can see how dry this land is here in the summer. It's really dry in the summer. So this is Mediterranean. This is very typical topography where you see it's a bit hilly and mountainous. Finally, let's talk about commercial gardening and fruit farming. This is also called truck farming, the main type of agriculture in the southeastern part of the United States. Um, they call this truck farming because that's typically how they would deliver their product was on the flatbed of a truck because it's very um, it's very uh, fragile. Also, sometimes they would just sell it out of this flatbed in boxes. So commercial gardening, these would be vegetables and landscape plants and products. You see fruits and specialty farming as well. It's a much more fragile product. It's more perishable. On the left here, this is cranberry farming. This would probably be in Maine. Cranberries need to be in cold climate zones. You can see this is a bog. These cranberries are here floating on the water. This is a landscape agriculture. So you see these are um, landscape plants. This would be a nursery. And then here we have our truck farming. Um, this is cauliflower. So they're putting it in the flatbed of the truck. They're probably going to put it into boxes and they'll take it to sell to market or or to deliver it to their distributor. So here are negative impacts of farming. All farming and cultivation of plants have negative impacts on the environment. You see decreased air quality because of the use of pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, and machine exhausts and dust. 
decrease water quality and increase water pollution because of pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, irrigation systems, and they alter the water flows that contaminate water supplies, rivers, lakes, and aquifers. Decrease soil quality, destruction of natural habitat.